Welcome. Tonight, I'd like to share with you the metaphysics of Christmas. This is the story of man and our own Christ of life. And we're going to start with our creation, and it all started with love. In the beginning was the one. There was one light, one song, our loving creator. And from deep within the heart of the one, an expression of love arose. And this was done in one breath. And God said, let there be light. I am. I am. the unique divine children of God. And we were beautiful sparks of Christ of love, radiant, joy-filled, and absolutely perfect. And we had been given a wonderful gift. We had free will. This meant that we could co-create with God's love. And we were so excited about the endless possibilities. So we found the most beautiful blue planet. It would be the perfect place to co-create life. And so with great joy, we descended to the beautiful planet to learn the art of co-creating. I'm creating, I'm creating. I am painting and molding a tree. Lots of flowers, marked with every color you can see. I'm creating, I'm creating. First a bat, then a bear, then a bee. light were radiant. They endowed everything with beauty and grace. Light exploded all around them in harmony and love. The creation was exquisite. But being spirit, they could not touch what they had created. They had no way of stepping into the cool waters or feeling the petals of the beautiful plants. So the beings of light decided they would create a physical body for themselves, a body of matter, a human. So they all created a wondrous body one in harmony with the universal heartbeat, yet with the capacity to become unique. So the children of light poured themselves into their new bodies, and the human experience was born. I'm creating, I'm creating, so the wonders that channel through me. According to plan. As the children of God focused on their creations, they forgot who they were. Things became more important. They forgot God, their source. All the power they had seemed to disappear as they slipped deeper into the world of matter. 
the children of God were no longer fed from the universal heart. As they worshipped what they had created, they began to need food for fuel, water to drink, and air to breathe. They had forgotten how they had lived on light from God. And we needed light. So we began to fight for the light from each other. Competition and conflict grew. As we fought for the light to survive, the world became darker and darker. Man's ego had been born as his spirit was buried and life became a struggle. children of light fell into sleep. The materiality of their own creations had buried them deeply in matter. And as light around the planet began to almost still, this slower moving energy created a great veil that the light of the heavens could not penetrate. It had been created by God's children through their own free will. The veil could not be violated and now there was separation. Mankind had disconnected from source. And as they lost their connection with their higher self, they lived in a world of conflict. Their main goal became survival. But God did not leave us alone. His angels were all around us, just like parents on the sidelines of a big game. They were there trying to guide us, and most importantly, loving us. And slowly we began to stir, and God did help us. Actually, once man had opened its consciousness just a little bit, light beings were sent to help. And during the time of Abraham, a light being named Melchizedek came bringing the energy of divine thought to man. Divine thought that would connect man's mind with the mind of God. So that man could finally hear God's words. Melchizedek talked to Abraham, and through him the awakening began. From the country of Chaldea, I had come into this earth. In my heart were many wonders that the light was soon to birth. In the midst of all the gods of man, I chose to follow one, the unknown God of Abraham. I stand now as his son. And he said, follow me, and your children shall inherit all the land that you can see. And he said, take my hand, and your people shall outnumber even all my grains of sand. Follow me, follow me. Lift your eyes into the heavens, remember what can be. And he said, God I am, God Almighty, one and only. I'm the God of Abraham. And through many trials and errors, I was blessed as I did roam, holding steadfast to my faith in God. The covenant was sown, and I fathered many nations, and my children grew and grew. And deep within each of their hearts, the unknown God they knew. And he said, follow me. And your children shall inherit all the land that you can see. And he said, take my hand, 
and your people shall outnumber even all my grains of sand. Follow me, follow me. Lift your eyes into the heavens. Remember what can be. And he said, God I am, God Almighty, one and only. I'm the God of Abraham. Now the idea of one God took hold, and over many, many years, a great ritual of worship was created. God was acknowledged as creator, punisher, and rewarder for all. Rules were created for the people to follow, but even within their nations, struggle and oppression continued. The idealism of power dimmed the light of worship as they desperately worshipped the unknown God in form, while their hearts were still in darkness. These songs are from the Old Testament, the Book of Psalms. Alleluia, let heaven praise Yahweh. Praise Him, heavenly hearts. Praise them, sun and moon. Praise Him, stars of light. Praise Him, Heavens. How long, O oh Lord, will you forsake me? Forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts, have sorrow in my soul, and misery in my heart? O oh Lord, my God, bring light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. Oh Lord my God, how long? Praise the name of Yahweh. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, heavenly host. Praise Him, shining stars. Let all of heaven and earth praise Yahweh. It would take some time, but we were evolving. 4,000 years later, the followers of Abraham began to remember love. A few faithful beings began to emerge. Their minds were open. They had begun to feel the stirrings of hope within their hearts. Hope that God would hear their cries. Faith that they had not been forgotten. And they had read the promises that the prophets told them. And they finally believed. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower Great. 
just a few. Then more and more could feel the love that was coming. In Isaiah it says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of shadow of death, upon them the light has shined. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. His name is called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty One, Prince of Peace. The people waited with open hearts looking for God, waiting for his touch.
within us is that time drawing near when you shall appear. And so it was that this thin thread of hope, held by the hearts of a few, was just enough to open the consciousness of man. Father, Mother, God was sending the awakened one, the Christ. This was the Son of God who could build a bridge so that man could find his way home. While the world of mankind was growing in faith, the heavens were filled with joy. And so the time had come the very heavens began to glow. There was a buzz with activity and joy. The celestial beings gathered from every corner of the universe to share in this moment, and everyone wanted to be there. <laughs> Never before had such a loving gift been given. Excitement filled the air. The time had arrived. Mankind had finally evolved to the point where they were ready to rediscover love. And God was sending his son to open their hearts. such a great gathering. The love for man was overwhelming, and so the courts of heaven were filled, and a hush fell over all. There in the midst was divine creator, Father, Mother, God. And as all honored God with a love unspeakable, one soul stepped forth, a soul so bright, he was pure love made manifest. This was the Son of God, the dearly beloved of the Father, Jesus the Christ. And as the Christ stood there, such a connection love emanated between them. All could see the oneness. No, not a word was spoken, all knew the mission. This was the one soul that would bring the consciousness of knowing God back to planet Earth. The one that would create a bridge and give mankind with a pattern to follow. Back to divine creator, back into sonship for all. And as the angels sang, the grand descent began. Jesus the Christ was coming to earth. 
All of the heavenly host accompanied him as far as they could. Some went before to prepare the way. Some came close, but could not enter the realm of earth. So they joined together and hovered in the night sky. There they created the most beautiful star the world had ever seen. Deeper and deeper Jesus moved, holding the light, surrounded by angels of joy. Deeper and deeper into the consciousness of man, he came, a flame from the Father. And so it was that on a dark night in a manger in Bethlehem, Jesus the Christ, the beloved of the Father, came to earth. shall be to all people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, <laughs> lying in a manger. <laughs> and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Angels we can hear on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous dreams. the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing that the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Luke 2, 15-16. As the shepherds stood at the manger and beheld the baby, they could not understand why God would send his son to such humble surroundings. Then they realized that God didn't need their temples or sacrifices. They had felt His presence. They knew that heaven and earth had become one in this manger. And in their humble hearts, God's love was received. 
and they began to remember. created was changing now forever. Heaven had come to earth. a pattern to follow. And so he had to be born just like every other human baby and then become the realized child of God. We know that Jesus loved all mankind and he could see the spark of God within each heart. And in the midst of all the heavy thoughts of man, Jesus was able to live as God's son in the flesh, yet divine as ever. Jesus had come through the veil 
bringing God's love to mankind. The people marveled at his works, and they listened to his words. God's meeting place with man is in the heart, and in a still, small voice, he speaks. Aquarian Gospel 2607. Man is a delegate of God to do his will on earth, and man can heal the sick, control the spirits of the air, and raise the dead. Because I have the power to do these things is nothing strange. All men may gain the power to do these things, but they must conquer all the passions of the lower self, and they can conquer if they will. So man is God on earth, and he who honors God must honor man. For God and man are one, as father and child are one. Aquarian Gospel 91, 39 through 41. God never made a heaven for man. He never made a hell. We are creators and we make our own. Now cease to seek for heaven in the sky. Just open up the windows of your hearts and like a flood of light, heaven will come and bring a boundless joy. Aquarian Gospel 33, 9 through 10. Such beautiful words open the hearts of man. Jesus taught that God was our parent, our father, our mother, and that God lived within our hearts. But life would always be our choice. We had free will. Then he showed us how we could use that will. Jesus demonstrated mastery over matter in every way, and he taught the people how to do this too. Jesus taught man how to use God's energy to create a new world. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he comforted the weary and gave them hope. Man was not meant to live separate from God. They were his children and were designed to live in his love. They were not meant to get lost in their creations. Their creations were designed to serve them. Man was not made for fire, but fire was made for man. The people loved Jesus. They loved what he knew and what he believed. about this Jesus guy? I just had the pleasure of experiencing him and let me tell you, it was the most amazing thing of my life. I mean, just being in that unconditional love, it was just the most amazing feeling and he was healing people. I mean, people that couldn't see could all of a sudden see and people that were deaf could hear. Excuse me, I, I heard, overheard you talking. And, uh, this man who's come that heals the sick and the lame. Yeah. Who is this man? In his hands there is love, in his heart there's compassion like I've never seen, in his words there is truth, in his eyes I see God, in his hands there is love, Who is this man? in his heart there's compassion like I've never seen. to the people, and their hearts began to open. Jesus had awakened. Now he asked the people to awaken their own inner Christ. He had demonstrated mastery over matter. 
His next step was to demonstrate the power of God's love over death. Death was an illusion. Man is spirit, and spirit is eternal. Jesus had brought divine love to man. Now, through his demonstration, he would take human love back to the divine. And as he approached his final days, many of his followers understood the plan. They knew of the great blessing that was to come. There was to be a mystic baptism of the entire earth. The veil that had been created so long ago would finally be lifted. This would let the heavenly light in once again. Then, during his final week on earth, he sent forth a message throughout all of Galilee so that any who wanted could come and receive a benediction from his hand. It was at this, his last ministry, that the song of Miriam was sung to herald the great gift he would give. From the Aquarian Gospel, chapter 146, 4 through 16, the song of Miriam. from on high, all hail the Christ who ever was and is and evermore shall be, all hail the darkness of the shadow land, all hail the dawn of peace on earth, goodwill to men, all hail triumphant king who grapples with the tyrant death, who conquers in the fight and brings to life immortal life for men. All hail the broken cross, the mutilated spear. All hail the triumph of the soul, all hail the empty tomb. All hail to him, despised by men, rejected by the multitudes. For he is seated on the throne of power. All hail, for he has called the pure in heart of every clime to sit with him upon the throne of power. All hail, the rending veil, the way into the highest courts of God are open to the sons of men. Rejoice, O men of earth, rejoice and be exceeding glad. Bring forth the harp and touch its highest strings. Bring forth the lute and sound its sweetest notes. For men who were made low are high exalted now. And they who walked in darkness and in the veil of death are risen up. And God and man are one forevermore. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! was fulfilling his mission. Love had been brought to the planet. Now it was his time to go home. And as his spirit left his body, a great sigh was heard from the very heavens. The veil of matter that the sons of God had created was being pierced by one who knew God. A Christ had walked through the valley of death and had taken the great love of God with him. Man's love was reunited with God's love. In that moment, Jesus filled the thoughts of race consciousness on every level. With the eternal love of God, heaven and earth had become one. Now the light of God could pour onto the planet like never before. Holy Spirit, the activity of God, could now come to earth and guide us all. Before Jesus left, he said, I must go to my Father to prepare a place for you. But I will send to you a holy comforter, and she will teach you in your hearts and cause you to remember. Through this Holy Spirit of God, you are ever connected with me, and where two or more are gathered in my name, there will I also be. Grieve not, for Holy Spirit will fill you and teach you everything that I did. And everything I did, you shall do in greater. And with her help, you'll be, even, be able to do even greater things than I have done. Through the Spirit of God, you will come to know your own inner Christ, Christ, <laughs> and be at one with me. Okay. 
through the life of Jesus, God and man have been reunited. The veil has parted and the pathway is set. Heaven and earth is now possible. And a magical thing happened as well. Jesus Christ never left mankind. Jesus had said, Lo, I am with you always. Through Christ and the Holy Spirit, we are being bathed in the energy of God every moment. It is this energy of light that feeds the people. Now we can be fed by spirit just like we used to be. All we have to do is open up and ask. That's when heaven and earth can become one inside of us once again. And you can feel the presence within. And if you listen, you will hear Holy Spirit sing her song to your heart. Know ye not, ye are gods? You have the power of heaven to create on earth. And as we try, we too one day will stand in Christed consciousness, fully awakened, just like Jesus. Until then, we celebrate the Christ that did come. It has grown into a tradition for Christians everywhere to gather and celebrate the great day that Jesus the Christ was born, the day that he brought the Father's love. And every time we come together to speak of God, no matter where we are or who we're with, the Spirit of God is with us. Holy Spirit surrounds us, and the angels fill our hearts. And every time we gather, we awaken just a little more.
his name all oppression shall cease.